This is the uh, Central Business Architecture meeting. Um, it's April 23rd, 2024. We have one item on the agenda, um, which is, whoops, sorry. Um, I just lost the agenda, there it is, okay. Sorry, uh, we have one item on the agenda which is review of exterior lift and door entry at five star or, uh, by five star builders at 41 Strong Avenue, Northampton map ID 32C-50. Um, before we have a review of that project, is there any um, public comment on any item other than that agenda item? You can unmute if you have a comment that is other than this particular item for review. I don't see any hands raised or anything. Will okay. we be reviewing the uh, meeting minutes from the previous meeting, accepting them? Uh, that is after we do the applicant's review. Okay. Um, so at this point, I welcome the applicant to come forward and present their project. Um, I'm not sure who that would be. So um, if, if either the applicant or the applicant's representative can um, go ahead and unmute and present um, briefly the project. And I have allowed Robert, you can screen share if you were um, prepared to do that. I have um, opened that up for you. Okay, great. Um, I was just gonna listen in, but um, I'm happy to uh, go through it. So let me pull up the drawings real quick. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Five star. Sorry, it took me a while to, as you know, to get onto this. So I thought I was all prepared and then uh, this happened. Okay. All right. So I'm just pulling up the drawings. So, all right. And I don't zoom enough. So just uh, screen sharing happens. So if you go to the bottom of your Zoom screen yeah. and it says yeah. share screen, you can click that and then select the file that you want to share and it should project. Oh, share screen. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, screen two, share. Okay. Yep. You can see that. Okay. I, why is it so small on my screen? Sorry. <laughs> All right, well, um, do you have copies of this in front of you? Um, yeah, if you could scroll through, I think the, the um, committee has probably seen this, but this would be helpful for the public and also committee members sort of discussing this. Okay, all right, so um, you know the project, it's um, to gain access into the Honey uh, Cannabis Retail Store at 41 Strong Ave in downtown Northampton. Um, the cover page here is just the applicable codes that are uh, applicable to this project um, location. Um, this is an outline of the building on the first page. And it's really just kind of restricted to the bottom left corner along the street and creating an access way. I'll show you on the next page, which is larger. So. Here's a portion of that building. And the idea is uh, Strong Ave is along here. There's an alleyway here that uh, goes to behind the building. This portion here is an existing bulkhead that leads down into the basement for deliveries. Uh, what the intent is, if you look to the top left of the drawing, there were some windows that were filled in many, many years ago. So the idea was to um, remove the brick in this, the first window closest to the corner to the right of the bulkhead and uh, create an opening in that wall, um, creating another opening in this wall that's in the uh, main vestibule that leads up to, there's a restaurant on the second floor. And then there was a door in this wall here 
they're going to reinstall a door in the previous opening there. So as we look at the bottom plan, the lift will be uh, situated just inside this line here, which is the property line. Um, it sits in a three inch recess, which is a concrete recess for the uh, lift, the bottom mechanics of it. So that way when a person um, accesses into this lift, it's level with the adjacent ground and roadway. So the idea now is that the person goes up the lift, um, goes up about 22 inches uh, vertical. Uh, there's a safety door on the inside. So that opens once the lift reaches that level, the door opens. Um, they're going to create a hallway taking part of the retail area of the Honey Cannabis store, uh, create a hallway there, and then create this opening here, which uh, will be about 32 inches wide, which is a minimum width that you require for a wheelchair. And then um, there is a large enough turning radius here should somebody need to turn around and then they will uh, get buzzed in or call in for this door. So this way, this door stays secure. So, and then um, an employee will buzz them in and then that way somebody, uh, whether in a wheelchair or crutches, et cetera, uh, will then have access uh, to the retail component of the Honey store. Um, so um, this is, if you were looking at the front of the building from uh, Strong Avenue, um, this is that entry that leads into, this one down here, that leads into the uh, vestibule with the elevator that and the stairway that leads up. This is the main entry into Honey. And um, this is what the lift would look like. Um, I did a quick rendering here. Um, color kind of looks orange, but the intent was to match a brick color. Um, there is no glass in it. Um, it's all completely metal and we can paint, we can have it custom painted by the fabricator. So uh, we do have color swatches, should that be uh, something that somebody wants to see, or if you'll trust us to select a color um, that we think would work well with it. Um, so that's from the front. And then looking at the side of the building, the lift kind of covers that opening that we're creating in that existing, uh, what was a window. Um, we, somebody did point out, and that was uh, very good that there's probably a telephone vault wiring, uh, something down here. Um, these bollards were just shown that we wanna add some safety features to the lift, but those will be located um, as needed within the property line. Uh, once the lift itself has been installed. Um, any questions? Will the planning board be reviewing this project? No, it does not trigger planning board review. Okay. Um, I'm curious to know the dimension between the lift enclosure structure and the adjacent building. Um, I assume as of right now, the existing condition is passable by a, a vehicle. Um, yes, actually, because it's wider where the lift is and it's actually the narrowest point is where the bulkhead is. Mm -hmm. um, if you allow me, I can pull that up. Okay, I'm not going to try to rush because then I make mistakes. Um, so can you see this plan? Yes. All right. So um, it's overlaid on an existing uh, site plot plan that was done. So that easement, I think it's holding 10.285 feet. And as you can see, that's kind of the narrowest point is where that bulkhead is, which is in yellow here. So the lift, you know, that's showing it with the door open. Um, with the door closed, it uh, is outside of that easement as well. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Okay. Sure. 
and um, just um, so from the corner of the lift to this building as an FYI is just over 14 feet. Okay. And vehicles are what? Uh, trucks are probably eight, eight and a half at the most, if that. Um, the Can other, yeah. oh, sorry. The other that I that I had um, um, property lines. It looked like in one of the drawings that the the concrete footing or structure underneath um, mm -hmm. was crossing the property line. Um, it's, <laughs> and I was just kind of um, estimating that you know once you excavate. And I'm assuming you can still see the screen. Yes. So the property line is this long and long dash, two short dashes. Mm -hmm. So the pit will actually be the part that has the X in it. And I was just showing that there's probably going to be, you know, some concrete uh, in order to create the pit, you know, a curve that would be flush with the existing uh, sidewalk and or asphalt. So, and it's already concrete that it will be sitting on. So, and if you could imagine, there's probably like a three or four inch line of concrete. Well, I think the concrete ends here and then this becomes asphalt here. So, I, um, is it concerned? I a, oh, go ahead. I have a question for you. Um, did you ever consider having the lift be inside the building um it seemed like once you open it up and and uh that there's there might be enough space in there that you could um uh that the visc that the lift could fit inside the building um no because there's a uh, inside i was down in the basement briefly um there is a working uh basement as you can see there's windows here and um, you would have to basically demo the floor because the floor is at this granite level here. Right. Um, I think it would just be um, what kind of floor? What kind of floor is it? Uh, it's wood joist built up. Um, you'd have to go in there with a structural engineer. You'd have to head off the framing. Um, and I don't know if there's enough space to include this within that. Uh, but short answer is no, we did not consider doing that. Um, may, may I jump in? Um, sorry, my name is Volkan Pulatol. I'm, I'm the owner of the building, and um, I had a <clears throat> connection issues. I just uh, jumped in. Robert, thank you very much for your explanation on this. Oh, my pleasure. Um, um, just so, um, just, I just want to just touch base on that question that um, the gentleman just asked. Um, so I'm Joe Blumenthal. Oh, hi, sir. How are you? Okay. Um, uh, that's actually, uh, we did discuss that briefly with my builder, and I think he's on here right now. But uh, that project opens a bunch of um, um, problems with the gas lines that are there and the foundation, and it just creates this major um major work and it's 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 just absolutely costly that we can't afford to do so you'd have to move a gas line to uh, absolutely not just move a gas line but rebuild the foundation in some areas and um you know rebuild that hole though i don't know if you can see the pictures there um like, just i can't becomes... tell i can't tell from the photograph where the oh, gas okay line is. well well, the, these this building is from 1800s uh maybe you know this or not uh but uh the foundation is uh, literally from 1800, so it's uh, pretty fragile. Um, uh, you know, everything else around it is, uh, there's a lot of piping that runs around right underneath it. Um, gas lines, electrical lines, and so on, sewer lines, so on and so forth. Um, uh, you know, we, we would have to move a lot of those pipes, and we would have to um, pretty much eliminate the area that we're using right now for our dry storage. Um, and we would have to build some sort of 
I'm assuming my builder might answer this better. Um, if I recall some sort of uh, platform that could hold the lift um, and rebuild it back up. It's just, it's just, and sock out the brick um, and just, you know, implement that lift inside the building. It's just way too costly to do. Okay. Did, did you, you, so you did have a, you said you reviewed it and there was a cost comparison between this option and the other option? Yeah, I mean, if if the money wasn't an object, sure, uh, it could it could have could have could have get done. I'm, I'm sure it could, but uh, it just uh, becomes way too costly at that point because uh, you're literally going inside the building uh, that is, you know, built in 1800s and reworking the foundation and re you know, redoing the piping and everything, and um, you know, re rebuilding the platform that's going to sit on. It's it's just um, it just becomes very costly. Well, in addition to that, you'd have to head off the existing uh, joists that are supporting the floor, and you'd have to get beams into there to carry those in order to create an opening and then build a lower floor in order for the platform to sit on. Um, and then weatherproof and design a whole interior portion for that, for the lift. I mean, just just to give you uh, just understanding of uh, the cost on this, this is already it's going to cost over one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Just as uh, as we're describing it to you right now, uh, the lift alone itself is costing between fifty to sixty thousand dollars. Just the lift alone. Never mind the uh, electrical um, uh, work we need to do. Um, you know, the in interior work we need to do. Uh, all those openings and you know restructuring that whole hallway. Um, the floor ceilings, um, uh, remo uh, moving um, um, uh, uh, the, the um, uh, sprinkler. fire sprinkler. Yeah, yeah, sprinkler thank, work. thank you. Sure. Yeah. So um, we have lots, a lot of work to do as is right now. I just, you know, uh, it's just that the other, the other way just becomes way, way too problematic. And th these are our estimations. We don't know. You know, sometimes you get into projects, and uh, you know, it triggers. Uh, um, honestly, it's almost like a domino effect. You know, you <laughs> you start uh, uh, cutting some area down, and um, it triggers, you know, other issues. And um, these are just estimation that what we have to do. I mean, uh, I don't I don't even know what that would open um, by moving a gas line or a pipe or um, you know, sewer lines, this, that, whatever. I I don't know what that's going to create. I I assume the easement um, for the driveway would prevent you from putting a ramp in there and going over the bulkhead with a ramp. Or, yes, or sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sir. So um, just 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 a quick recap. Uh, we're actually at this for two years now, and we've been in for no architectural access board with this project. Um, and we had architects look into this building and trying to find a way to have some accessibility going into this building that would make sense so that we don't have to close any of the stores that's in this building. And this is the only way. Um, so, if, so the architectural access board is threatening you with having to close the store if you not, don't provide not access? Not threaten me, sir. They already have. I thought there was a provision in the in the act, whereas if it were if it was too expensive to provide um, yes, access, yes, that you don't have to do it. Yes. Uh, well, that's what we were hoping that you know they would give us a relief, but uh, um, they decided not to, and they pretty much ordered the building to shut down. Um, so I. Um, I, I called them up and uh, literally the whole um, the building inspector was coming to shut the building down. Uh, we were going to lose 50 plus employees. Uh, Molino has been in operation over 20 years. So is Bishop's Lounge. Um, Honey's been uh, the dispensary in the first floor. He's been there for uh, two years and brought $1.2 million in tax revenue to state and city. Um, we were going to lose everything. And, um, and we were working on this project um 
uh, to see if we could even possibly do it because we were under the assumption that we couldn't due to um, the uh, where the pro um, property line is. Uh, we were under the assumption that uh, you know the property line was too close and we couldn't put a lift. What yeah. turns out, it barely fits. It barely fits. And with the help of Garaventa, which is the lift company that's going to build this in custom, um, this is the only way that we can make it work. Um, Architectural Access Board gave me a relief till July 1st. Um, and if I don't get this built, the whole building shuts down. And that's not, I'm not exaggerating. That That is a fact. Right. And Joseph, to your comment about a ramp, um, as you know, the requirement is, you know, one inch rise per 12 inches of run. So the ramp would have to be uh, minimum 22 foot long with a five foot by five foot uh, landing in front of it. So you're talking, you know, something 27 feet long that, you know, you'd be wrapping, wrapping halfway around the building <laughs> to try to do such a thing. And I think it would... Uh, you know, I think aesthetically, something of that nature, that kind of big, that large, I don't think, I, and, I don't even know where it, where it could go. And sir, never mind that, if we won't be able to use the parking lot, we won't be able to have our um, uh, trash barrels picked up. Um, the Pretty much the back of Molino's building would be absolutely useless. Nobody will be able to enter and um it, it just it, it, no matter which way we looked at this project it just doesn't work because um you know i didn't know anything about accessibility before um in terms of you know what robert knows you know in terms of the pitches the turns the radiuses the length and everything that you need to have in order to make a building or any place accessible right i'm under the assumption well let's put a ramp and if you know, uh, if we can get people in that way, well, we got accessibility, right? But it doesn't work that way. It's um, you have to have certain rules in place. You know, that's why if there's in case if there's a fire, if there's any kind of emergency situation where they, that those people can, um, you know, access the building safely. Um, so you can't just, you know, say, uh, let me just put a ramp here. It doesn't matter what the pitch is. Um, Can, uh, you know, it doesn't matter another, what the turn mirror is. Let me ask another question. This may be far fetched, but could you raise the sidewalk to the level of the entrance of the building from? I will. The... I will love. To, I will love to. But that city's uh, city's decision, not mine. And we already we already got a big big no because that was one of the option. We had three options in this building. Um, one is this what we're uh, showing you today. The other one is for Tom to give us the sidewalk and we put a ramp and um, that becomes accessible, but then you're gonna look at a ramp in front of the building. So I don't know what that's gonna look like, right? Uh, that's one option. Or we close Honey Dispensary and the whole first floor, the entire first floor becomes accessibility to ramp. So right. that by the way, costs over $800,000 to do. And um, not only that, um, that, that, I want you to have an understanding that that building is ten, barely 10,000 square foot, okay? All four stories combined. So, and the most lucrative real estate is in the first floor, which sure, is 20 I understand. square foot. I understand that. This, in effect, what, you're, what the, the situation you're presenting to us is that the Architectural Access Board can basically destroy any historic building in downtown um, if uh, there isn't a practical way to get access to it? Yes and no. Um, yes, if you trigger an upgrade. No, if you don't trigger it. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you did, you did, you, when you put in the dispensary, that was an yeah. upgrade? So there's a whole um, uh, MAAB review of um, that outlines how this was triggered, which was part of the package that we received. So we were, uh, when we were building Honey, um, uh, first of all, I was under the assumption that this building didn't need to be accessible because it was never accessible in terms of 
on the regulations and rules, right? Mm -hmm. um, see, the accessibility is two different things. Like you and I might think accessibility is, um, you know, do whatever it takes to get people in, but there is the side of accessibility is, uh, you know, the length, the, you know, the pitch, the turn and all that stuff, right? Uh, the regulation part of it. So right. uh, uh, this building was <laughs> never accessible. It's in entire um, uh, time that this building is there. And when we redid Honey, um, we were under the assumption that you have to, Robert, back me up on this, uh, that you have to pass one third of building's value in order for you to trigger such an upgrade. We right. were not even close. So we didn't even think that we needed to upgrade. And I think that even building department back then before you retire, he's like, well, no, you guys don't need to upgrade anything because you're not triggering anything. And um, and never mind that this building was never accessible. You guys just had a workaround, right? So there's a difference it, between accessibility and workaround. Is the is what triggered it that it, it went from being a restaurant to being a dispensary? Or was it so I, I guess it? there was, was a, a the cost of the renovations. So I don't know that we need to get into the back and forth about why mm -hmm. it's there required to do this now by the architectural right. access board. Yeah. And that that is a legal issue that is beyond the right. jurisdiction right. of this Correct. board. But it's, uh, it, it really disturbs me that this gives an architect, architectural access board the power to destroy any building in downtown Northampton. The, I, I wouldn't uh, phrase it that way, Joe, but <laughs> every project is different. And uh, um, there, like I said, if you want to read through the entire um, case that was in the package, that might give you a little more perspective. I think just to keep it to this meeting and what our jurisdiction right. okay. is and I, what our requirement I'll, is, that I'll we bat, can... Right. I just wanted to understand this. Sure. How yeah. this issue was working itself out. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no so, problem. I, I I understand the frustration. There's a lot of old buildings that were built way before building codes were in effect, and certainly before yes. the architectural yes. access board was in effect. But this is where they're at right now, um, and it's not our place to say whether the access board is correct or not. I think what we want to look at is whether what is proposed meets the intent of the central business um, architecture guidelines. And if we can focus on that, that would be ideal. I, I also want to say, because um, there was some confusion with the link to this meeting, it is possible that there are many people who maybe wanted to be a part of this meeting and because they didn't have the right link um, or were not able to be part of this meeting. So. Uh, I'd like to go through and get feedback from all of the board members and then open it up to public comment. But I think that we're probably going to have to continue this for at least 72 hours just to give time to repost the meeting um, so that further public comment is allowed. So with that in mind, um, Melissa and I think Bridget is on here as well. Did you have any comments or questions about this project? Yeah, I was just I reading know. staff recommendations and um, the materials. Um, is there going to be glass in the uh, lift? Um, no, not at this time. Uh, lift is completely um, made out of steel and or aluminum. Um, the Initially, we were showing it with glass, but I think the concern was um, to avoid any kind of, you know, damage or being broken or things of that nature. I think there was, and if I remember correctly, I think glass was not allowed. I, there was some, was that? Um, no, that that's not true. Glass is allowed. In fact, oh, okay. these lifts often are very glassy and open. Yeah. Um, I understand your concerns about uh, damage. Of course, a solid yeah. surface like this also invites graffiti. That is true, yeah. <laughs> so you, you can't, I don't know that you can win, but a oh, glassy yeah. enclosure would be lighter and maybe less visible. However, you're looking through it into an alleyway. So <clears throat> I, I guess I leave that to the board to discuss. 
um, May, whether this um, needs to be more glassy or not. Well, just just want to uh, before you folks make your decision, to just point out one more thing. Um, as you see in the drawing, uh, when the door opens, um, we have to make sure um, that the cars that are coming from not necessarily from the road, but from the back parking area, coming when they're coming out. The um, the thought was, well, what if by accident somebody opened that door? Thanks, Robert. Yep. So, someone opened that door. And I mean, the cars aren't driving there fast at all, for sure. But uh, what if somehow there was some sort of collision as the car was pulling out and somebody opened that door? Do we want a shattered door or do we want a stainless steel door that just maybe just hit somebody's bumper? So that was one of the other thought to keeping it steel. Did that make sense? Yeah, I mean, and I, I guess the I, other the other thought about that is if it was a glass door, someone in the lift could see if a car was coming. Uh, they won't be able to. We, um, unfortunately, they won't be able. I mean, uh, not, uh, they can, I guess, peek the door open a little bit and take a look at it. You know, I'm not sure if they can do that. Robert, can they see it? I don't think so, right? Um. I think it'd be hard pressed. I mean, somebody in a wheelchair, they're kind of low. And I just think the glass, if I remember from the Garaventa um, brochure, is it's just the upper portion is glass. So I think if you're sitting down, I think it'd be hard pressed to see it. But as you point out, you know, cars aren't going to be whipping down here. You know, they're just coming. There's just a few spaces back here that cars are actually parking. I mean, we're, uh, listen, we're, um, um, you know, we're certainly open to suggestion. I mean, if yeah. you guys want to gloss, we can certainly do that. It's right. at least in my ways. We were just more thinking of safety reasons. That's all. Right. And we are including bollards. You know, I would, we could put several here. You know, we could put one right up to the, easement line uh, to protect, you know, somebody that is actually coming out. I, I mean, in I can't say in all honesty, but I would think, you know, this is probably going to be very underutilized. <laughs> Can I ask a, a question about how you actually gain access to this? Is it just no. always open? Um, is there any concern about somebody getting inside the lift and not being visible if there's no glass? Yeah. Um, I don't know personally how um, you access it. I don't know if you have to be buzzed in or if um, no, I'm not familiar the, the, with the control mechanism, is so yeah, I can the, say. The, um, the door has to be opened um, at all times during business hours. So anybody can access it at all times. So, uh, I mean, we'll close the door, obviously, uh, once the business is closed, just like you're closing a regular door. Um, but um, during business hours, it has to stay open. I, I guess that would be another reason to perhaps make it last, just so that you can see if somebody is in there, especially if they're not supposed to be in there. You would hate for it to become a, a public latrine. Yeah, or safety issue if somebody's in, in trouble. That's true. Well, the other side, like it, when there is a door <laughs> going into the hallway, that's glass. Just just so you folks know that. I have Robert, a can you, about can you? people in wheelchairs opening the door and rolling out into that space used by vehicles and not being able to see. I think that's that's a significant um consideration that needs to be made people need to be able to see before they open the door if if the way is clear okay so the suggestion is to make the, uh, the door gloss i think could, they need could... to be just able to see at the sides as well um for for folks turning in would it uh, would it be practical i'm sorry emily no, are you done go ahead joe or would it be practical to have the front and the back of the enclosure be glass, but have the door be metal. That way you wouldn't have to worry so much about the car going into it. But, some, but people could 
people could see through the um, enclosure. Uh, unfortunately, no, because the the side that you want to make it gloss it has the lift part. Uh, we have to build a brick layer um, that is going to... Robert, maybe you can explain this a little better than I can. Um, um, sure. I'll just... I'm um, trying to pull up... Uh, I'm going to share my screen again, if I may. Technically, we can if we put that on the other side, what he's going to show you now, but then we're over the property line. Right. It's what they call the mast, which is actually the uh, lifting mechanism of the lift. Yeah, we thought of that too. But... So we had put that, originally we were going to have the mast facing the street, but it's a little bit clunkier and I think it's a cleaner install if the mast is um, facing the existing bulkhead. So I think it's six feet or eight feet, right, Robert? Uh, six feet, I think, tall. Yeah. So you can see part of it here. This is. We we can't see anything we right now. Anything. Oh, well, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. I thought I hit it. All right. So can you see this now? Yes. All right. So this is just a typical uh, one of the Garaventa lists, but this one's going up a full flight. So this portion here, what is called the mast, is actually on one of the sides. So if you imagine if this was the unit we were using, the mast is here um, and it's exposed and that's kind of the mechanical portion of the uh, lift that actually does the lifting and it has the hydraulic and or chain lift uh, within that. So, um, but the, as you said, the perhaps, street, I'm sorry, go ahead. The street is on the other side from that, right? So the yes, so if, and and the, so if you're looking at that, if you're looking at that drawing that you just yeah yeah, so had, I'm just focusing on this here right there. It shows it the lift tower. So this is the lift tower here. So that has to all be solid. Couldn't be glass. Right. Yeah, that's where the mechanics. Right. That's right. that's what lifts lifts the lift. But the street side could be glass. Um, I imagine so i'd have to get together or you know we'd have to discuss with uh what garavanta offers and it seems like there could be a panel on the door that also allows folks in a wheelchair to to yeah. see out the door without making the entire door right oh sorry yeah well it's something we could definitely explore i mean you know, this is showing that they do offer some glass versions. Yeah, I'm not sure. This is a direct entry. I'm not sure if you can put a glass on the side. I know in the door you can. I'm not sure if you yeah. can on the side. But, um, and Aileen, if you said probably going to have to redo this in 72 hours, maybe we could uh, talk to Garavanta between now and then and see what options are available. Yeah, I think that would be great. Okay, I just don't know. Um, is this in production, Vulcan? Have you guys? Not, not, no, because no, we're, we're we have to go through this to make okay. sure that we're passing. Okay, this I just want, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to be delivered next week or something. So no, no, I wish. No. Okay, right. <laughs> no. So. Okay. So I. I, I think this continuates is a very good idea. In fact, I would make a motion to continue the meeting so that we could have proper access. And I would request that the applicant show a drawing of um, what the enclosure would look like if the um, glass was, if there was a, mo if most of the wall um, facing the street were glass. Okay. I think before I think, we, I think before we move into making yeah. motions, um, I need to open it up to the public for anyone here from the public that has a comment. Uh, Tom Murphy. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm with the Disability Law Center. We we brought the uh, complaint with the Architectural Access Board that led to this. Um, I, and I and I joined the meeting late because of the glitch with the with the zoom um so i just i just wanted to clarify because i joined late there was a discussion about um the lift being enclosed and it was it's difficult to tell from the from the drawings that were that were shared um is 
is the lift going to be completely enclosed and protected from the elements? Yes, Tom. Yes, um, the lift is made, it's um, designed and fabricated to be uh, an exterior installation. It's, it's essentially an in exterior elevator. Right. Okay. And it does have a slight sloped roof, which is kind of hinted at in the uh, plans and elevations, that quick rendering. Tom, we were just to get, get uh, we were just discussing about the, um, the whole um, uh, lift is made out of steel. Mm-hmm. And um, we were just discussing to make the doors uh, perhaps um, see through glass. Yeah, and yeah, maybe I caught that part. Okay, okay. I, my 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 main concern was in in um, in seeing the drawings originally was was whether or not the the lift itself was was enclosed. Yep, um, it's fully or whether it was just out in the open. Um, the only request that. Um, I want to say here is that, you know, when, when you're considering this, you know, gloss wrapper on, it's very hard to clean gloss. And when, you know, um, um, where there's a lot of graffitis, I know it's kind of funny to say this, but uh, we, you know, battle with graffitis in that building all the time. And I clean and paint and clean and paint over and over again. Um, if somebody, you know, scratch this gloss in a bad way, I can't repaint that. You know, if if this is all steel, uh, sure, if you got, you know, we want to make the front door glass so we can see through for multiple reasons, um, you know, I'm all for it. Um, and glass will look beautiful in the beginning, but I can see two or three months down the road, people are going to put stickers, they're going to write on them, they're going to scratch it, God forbid, break it. Um, it's just, it's more for long-term purposes if you can keep the sides steel, I think that would be a great choice for, um, uh, you know, if, if there is a graffiti, we can always paint it, right? Uh, bring it back to the original look. Are there other comments from the public? Um, if there are no further comments from the public, I like for a board member. Oh, Carolyn. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to clarify. I'm not sure if the applicant said it, but the not only um, ensuring that the um, structure itself doesn't encroach over to the public um, um, property line or the street lot line, that the bollards aren't uh, encroaching either, because we don't want to create a pinch point to prevent the public. Um, an accessible path along the public sidewalk. And um, the way the bollards are shown in the um, rendering would appear that it pinches the um, public access in favor of just providing this accessible entry for, the, for one private building owner. So um, I think that the bollards may not be appropriate in that location. Um. Should I jump in on this, Rob? Um, so I just uh, want to clarify. I think we were um, um, talking to just leave the the ballers inside the by like right next to the hatchway because that's the most important one. Uh, that's where the cars are kind of backing up. Uh, I think on the sidewalk area, I think should be uh, without ballers would be sufficient. Because it's pretty wide and um, the visibility is there, right? The next one, the one right next to the, um, the hatchway there. Yeah. So, so then maybe when you. Shown... Go ahead, Carolyn. I was just going to say, so maybe when for the time that um, it's continued, yeah, you could just erase those from the plans. Um, so um... it's clear to the committee what would be approved. Or what is being asked for? Sure. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, and I mean the rendering I did. I, it was just quick to give a sense of you know its impact on that area. I'm just uh, trying to minimize it. And uh, you know the plans do note that the bollards would be located within uh, the property line and not to interfere with anything. I was just 
more concerned about, you know, keeping anybody that's using it and the lift itself, it being an expensive item, you know, safe from anybody backing into it. But, you know, if you look here, um, you know, these purple circles, if you will, represent the bollards. I, you know, probably don't need that one there. And then maybe just one there as somebody's coming around to kind of protect it. So, but, you know, their location isn't set in stone, but they will be set in concrete once we decide where they need to go. Uh, any further comment before we close the public hearing? Well, you wouldn't be closing, you'd be figuring out a day to continue it. Um, okay. And, and it doesn't have to well, be, I, I would- I, I, I'm closing the public comment, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then and then going to the board discussion, correct? Um, well, I think if you're gonna leave it open because of this problem that we had to switch the Zoom okay. link, that it ultimately, the public hearing would remain open and then you all should determine a date that you all can reconvene and it can be any day. Um, we just need to post it 48 hours ahead. So that's why um, I would suggest something at least 72 hours out um, so that we have an opportunity to repost that on the calendar so that people who may have missed this can come back in and give their um, comments. Um, so um, I think, you know, we're at, what's today? Tuesday. So um, probably looking at next week, unless you wanted to do it Friday. <laughs> Car Carolyn, did we have, um, we have next Tuesday, the 30th? as an option or was that a day that people couldn't make? Um, I don't know. Let's Don't we have another me, meeting yeah. coming up? We have a we meeting have it on the 7th. Seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so let me just check here. Um, the 30th, um, there's no scheduled meeting. Um, so you can do it and you can do it at any time. Um, on any day that works for the applicant and your and the committee. Um, I mean, sooner the better. So whatever, whatever works for you guys. Can I suggest that we go go through the uh, evenings next week? So Monday the 29th at 6 p.m. Is that an option for people? Um, I would need to make it 630 because um, I, I have a commitment that could go past six o'clock. Tuesday, I could, do, Tuesday I could do six. I'm available both on the 30th and the 29th at six. I am too. 20 okay, so that sounds like I'm available. I'm available either Monday or Tuesday is fine. So it sounds like everybody's available on the 29th at 6.30 or on Tuesday the 30th at 6. Yes. Um, does the, is the applicant oh. have a, a day that works better? Oh, no, that, oh, sorry. Uh, no, that that's fine. Um, well, to be consistent, should we keep it for Tuesday, a week from today? Well, I'll, I'll make a motion that we continue the hearing till um, 30th at 6 p.m. And that as part of the motion that we request that um, we have a drawing that shows what the uh, enclosure would look like if um, the wall fates in the street was glass. Uh, do, is there a second for that motion? I second, second it. Okay. Wait, who was that? <laughs> um, I don't know if we two people did. I did. <laughs> okay. okay. Me too. <laughs> um, um, do we need to do roll call through this, Carolyn? Yes. So okay. I can do that. Um, Are we Alyssa? closing out the meeting? Do we have further comment? 
before we close. This, this is just to continue this, and then we're going to do the meeting minutes. I have to do a roll call. So, Melissa? Here. Okay. Bridget? Here. And th this is for continuing. Emily? Here. Um, Joe? Yes. And Alan? Okay. Yes. Okay. So that was unanimously continued till April 30th at 6 p.m. Um, so the hearing is still open. Um, <clears throat> And um, the board will continue the discussion on Tuesday. Uh, I have one comment. Um, perhaps, I, I'm sorry, I, I um, fell off the call. Um, we usually look at materials also. So I understand we're gonna get a brochure to, to know what the, um, I, I was going online to look up the elevator company and see what kind of colors they offer and, um, uh, what the material is. So I don't know if there's somehow you could convey what material will be used. Uh, we can do that. As I said, um, it's steel and um, they can paint it any color. Um, they offer uh, several types of glass, either a smoked, a plexi, or a laminated. So the rendering will be um updated to show that and we'll also uh provide you with the ral colors if you'd like i yeah, make definitely. a suggestion can i make a suggestion that since there's a lot of um, black metal work on the building uh -huh. which is quite attractive if you're going to do a glassy enclosure that the metal be black oh, yeah but then you. would love to hear that because that's their standard thank color you. that they usually deliver it in so thank you Thank you. You just made me laugh. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's very hard to find a custom color to repaint the if there was a graffiti yeah. on it. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And it'll match the um, wrought iron work that we have in the balconies and everything. It'll be awesome. Yes. And when you say steel, is it stainless steel or is it like a certain gauge thickness? Um, I'd have to get the specifications. We're actually waiting for a uh, final... Uh, shop drawings from Garaventa, but I'm guessing it's, you know, um, steel for, you know, I don't know if it's galvanized and then it gets painted, uh, whatever it is, I'm sure it's uh, designed to withstand the elements, so. Um, so thank, thank you, uh, applicants. We're sorry that we have to continue this, but we will see you next Tuesday. You're free to stay on the meeting, um, but we just have a few uh, things to review. I think just meeting minutes. Is that correct, Carolyn? Yeah. Okay. okay so, and you're free to go if you'd like. Sure. So a new notification will go out to the applicant and then they can forward it, that to us as needed. Correct? Yes. We'll send it and it's going to be posted on the city calendar. Okay. Terrific. All right. Yep. Thank you everyone for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank right, you. We'll see, you next, see you next Tuesday as needed. All right. Have a pleasant evening. Bye. You too. Bye. Okay, um, so I think the only other thing on our agenda is to review um, and approve the meeting minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review the meeting minutes and are there any comments? No comments? No comment. No comment. <laughs> is there a motion? Did, I'm sorry, did you wanna say something, Bridget? No, I said no, no comment. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So move. And a second. A second. Thanks, Bridget. Carolyn, do you want to do roll call? Sure. Um, Emily? Yes. Bridget? Yes. Melissa? <laughs> Here. <laughs> Joe? Yes. And Elon? Yes. Great. Okay. So um, thank you um, for, um, I'm glad you were able to hop on. I don't have no idea what happened with um, the Zoom, but it wasn't working. So I hope that that happened once, like two years ago with another meeting. 
and it hasn't happened since, but I'll double check the, the meeting um, Zoom link uh, before I post the agenda to make sure it's working. Okay. So, so are we gonna try to meet next week on Zoom or yes. in person? On Zoom. on Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks Great. for your help, Carolyn, tonight with everything. I appreciate it. Yeah, sure. No problem. Glad you were able to um, <laughs> log on. Yeah. All right. If, if there's nothing else, can I get a, a motion to close the meeting or adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I, I okay. have something to say. Okay. Hello? Yes? Hi. Hi. Oh, uh, I'm Cecil, and um, I applied to be on this council. And it's my understanding that nobody on the council knew that. Um, <laughs> so I'm just sitting in for the first time. Oh, yeah, so I'm glad you're here. So typically, um, the every committee um, is appointed, the members are appointed by the mayor and confirmed by city council. Um, and, um, the committee members and board members don't participate in that process um, because they're appointed directly from the mayor. So it's not, um, so it, sh um, it wouldn't necessarily be the case that anybody on the committee would know whether or not you had applied. Oh, it's so odd because I applied for this and I, and I wrote, you know, it said, oh, are there any other councils you'd like to try out? you'd be open to and I just checked off Arts Council and they called me. Um, so I, that's why I was confused about how it works, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I mean, All right. typically well, I'll this just ask the mayor. That would be great. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. Thanks for coming. Okay. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. A second. A second. Okay. And that one we actually don't need a roll call for. You can just right. say, does anybody object to this? <laughs> does anyone object? <laughs> uh, hearing none, then I, I think we are done for tonight. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs>